Hey everyone, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy. I am SRT Bull and I humbly thank you for checking out my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Rust kits. More specifically than that, we're actually going to be talking about how to create VIP kits using the Rust kits plugin. So ever since the re-implementation of the Rust kits plugin available from the UMod website, setting up kits is a little bit different. Now I know I've done a previous tutorial on the new version of Rust kits. However, I kind of glazed over a little bit the section that would deal specifically with setting up VIP kits. So that's what we're going to deal with today. So there's essentially four different things that you're going to be able to do proficiently in order to set up VIP kits. The first thing is, of course, setting up the different groups. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can set up groups. They're also known as Oxide groups. So you can use the built-in groups feature that's already natively there inside of Oxide, or you can use a plugin like BetterChat. I prefer to use BetterChat. If you don't want to have BetterChat on your server, you don't necessarily have to. You can just use the native commands within Oxide. The second thing you need to be able to do is actually building the kits, which of course, that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. But the part that I glazed over on my previous video on Rust kits is how to actually deal with the permissions associated with the different kits because I just skipped right over it. I didn't even talk about it on that video, I don't think. I'm going to show you how to set up permissions for your kits. And then, of course, I'm going to show you how to deal with those permissions afterwards so that the select group of players or the people that are in the group that you've defined are actually going to have access to that kit. And then the fourth thing that you're going to need to be able to know, and I'm not going to get into on today's video, is how to set up and how to run a Teb store. So if you want to be able to sell these VIP packages to your players, you have to have some sort of a store that your players can interface with and actually choose the packages that they want to be able to buy or whatever, however you're going to set it up on your server. Like I said, I'm not going to get into the Tebex portion of it. I have done a previous tutorial on how to set up a Tebex store. I'd also like to take this time to mention that there is actually a Tebex YouTube channel now and the content being produced on that channel is actually being produced by my very good friend and another fellow YouTuber by the name of Ted Palms or Ted Poems. I'm not sure how he wants the second part of his name said. I know that's not his last name, but whatever, you get what I'm getting at. Anyway, so if I can, I'll put a link to that channel in the top right hand corner. I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not because I'm not actually associated with it, but I'm going to try and get you guys that information anyways. So I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to set up VIP kits for your Rust server. But before we get into any of that, if you haven't already done so, make sure you click on that red subscribe button down below the video. It's the best way that you can support the channel and help support the work that I do. If you want to take it one step further, of course, you can always leave me a thumbs up or you can leave me a comment in the comment section down below. All right, let's get into building some VIP kits. All right, like I said before, the very first thing that we need to do is decide how many different groups we want to set up for our server. Now, for a lot of you, that might only be one group. Like, let's say you're going to have your regular players, which is already done for you. You don't have to deal with anything there. And then you want to have one group of VIP players. But it is worth noting that you can have literally as many groups as you want to have set up. And you can have different permissions or different kits associated with each one of those different groups. If you've ever used a plug in like player challenges, you know exactly what I'm talking about because player challenges will create like I think 15 or 20 different groups for you and you can associate different kits for each one of those groups. Anyways, don't worry about that. That's not what we're talking about today. So the very first thing that we need to do is actually create our group for this tutorial. I'm just going to create a group called VIP. So in your console, you want to type the command chat group add and then the name of whatever it is you want to call it and you can call it literally whatever you want. I'm going to use VIP, but you can use elite class or whatever it is that you want. Just know that whatever type title you use at this stage right now can't have any spaces in it. And as I'm saying that right now, I'm actually wondering if you put it in quotations, would you be able to have spaces in it? I'm not sure. In fact, let's test that out. So right now I'm just going to add my group called VIP and then we're going to go deal with the space thing here in a second. So successfully added group VIP. Great. That part's done. But let's do this test here real quick too. All right. So I've done another one here. Chat group add and then in quotations, a group name that has spaces in it. Original, right? All right, so as I expected, that didn't work. And I'll show you how you can work around this once we actually go into the data file for better chat. All right, so here we are in the data file for better chat. And the only reason why I wanted to bring you in here, this isn't a tutorial on better chat, but it is important to recognize that the group name that we defined on the page that we were just on a minute ago is actually displayed right here. So that's why you can't have any spaces in it, but you can put it in there however you want it to be, as long as there's no spaces or other characters characters in there. It's down here that matters. So the text. So this text is what's going to show up to your player's name, whoever is assigned to this group. So in the case of a VIP, this is how the VIP tag is going to look next to their name. So you might want to dress this up. So in my text field here, I've got VIP gold elite special player. In this section, you can put in literally whatever you want. This is in between quotations. So we have freedom there. And then of course, you can go through and you can change the color and you can change the size. But like I said, this is not a better chat tutorial. This is just me showing you the fundamentals of creating VIP kits. 
And of course, as always, anytime you make any changes to a configuration file, you want to make sure you hit the save button. And then of course, go back to your console and reload the plugin. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to go in and start creating some kits. And for now, because you guys are going to need to be able to see what I'm typing, I'm going to shut off this overlay. And wow, does that ever look boring? Okay, so this is where your creativeness starts to come into play. So there's a couple of factors that you need to take into consideration as you're building kits. Of course, you want to recognize what your gather rate is, what your loop modifier looks like, how easily things are accessible normally on your server. And the reason why I'm saying this is because you don't really want to build VIP kits that create a pay to win type of scenario for your server. You don't want people to be able to buy VIP and have instant access to M249s and C4 and rockets right out of the gate. So you want to be really careful with how you're creating your VIP kits. Just be cognizant of the players that may not be able to actually buy your VIP kits. So for this example, I'm going to create two different kits. One of them is just very basic. It doesn't really matter what I'm putting into the kit. And the second one is like kind of an OP type of kit, but I'm going to do two kits and assign them both to my VIP group. So the first one is just the brand new ninja suit that was just released about a week ago at the time of the recording of this video. And in order to do that, you obviously need to have the ninja suit. You don't necessarily have to be wearing it. You can have it just in your regular inventory. You can have it on your hot bar. It doesn't matter where you put it, but just know that when they claim the kit, it's going to put it in that location. So if it's on the hot bar, it's going to put it in their hot bar. If you're wearing it when you're building the kit, it's going to make the player wear it when they claim the kit. Another thing worth noting is I'm going to assume that you already know how to build kits. But in fact, in case you haven't, I'll put a link to a video in the top right hand corner that goes over all of the details of what I'm about to show you because I'm not going to go through all of the details. I'm just going to do the important aspects of VIP kits. So slash kit will bring up our kit GUI and we want to create a new kit and we're going to call this something. Let's just call this Ninja. So the permission section, this is the important part of setting up your new kits. When you're defining what the permission is going to be, you have to start it with the prefix kits. So we're going to do kits dot and then something. So in this case, I'll just do VIP one for the server admins that are going to be doing different levels of VIPs. So VIP bronze, silver, gold, however, you've got that worked out. Of course, you need to define the different permissions levels for each one of those groups. So historically in the past, what I've done is VIP one is bronze. VIP two is silver. VIP three is gold. Just an example to give you an idea. You can literally do whatever you want here. Just use something that makes sense in your brain so you can easily keep track of what your permissions actually are. And of course, once we're done all of our parameters, we're going to copy our inventory items from the inventory of our player character. And as you can see there, it placed this ninja suit on my wear items. The graphic isn't showing up, but it probably will. And then we want to click on save kits. And of course, you get a confirmation there saying that it saved the kit ninja. And because I said it was going to, I'm also going to create another kit here. And I've now copied my items from my inventory. Now, just to recall the information here, we've got kits.vip1. That is the permission that we're going to go deal with here in just a minute. We're going to click on save kit, go back. And now you can see I have two VIP kits here. One of them is the ninja suit and the other one is the kit kit that I just built. The next step is actually dealing with the permission. So now we need to assign the permission to the groups that we want to have access to this kit. So in our case, we've got the group called VIP and we want to assign them the permission VIP one. And as you all well know, I always suggest using permissions managers. If you've never introduced yourself to permissions managers, check this video out right now because it's going to completely change your life. You of course can deal with permissions manually, but why when you don't have to permissions manager from Stina Maru is free and the one from chaos code called admin menu is great, although not free. The functionality of both are very, very similar and very, very life changing as far as dealing with permissions. So we are going to be using permissions manager today from Stina Maru. So I'm just going to do slash perms group and that's going to bring up my available groups that I have already written on my server. And of course, we want to be dealing with the VIP group. So we'll go into that group there. And then which permission do we want to be dealing with? Well, we want to go into kits, of course. And as you can see, the Rust Kits plugin has actually written a permission for us called VIP one. Now I realize that it doesn't appear the same way it was written as kits dot VIP one, the kits dot VIP one just needs to be written that way so that the Rust kits plugin recognizes that it's its own permission. Wow, that was super hard to say. All right. So in the VIP kits, we want to grant the permission to the group VIP. And that's it. That's all. That's all we have to do. OK, so now that I've set up everything that I need to do, I've removed my admin level permissions for all of the different plugins on this server. Plus, I've taken away my owner ID. So now I'm just on this server as a regular player. If I do test in chat, it says just player next to my name. 
game, which is a mistake that I made when I was setting up my better chat group, but whatever, it doesn't matter for this tutorial. So if I do slash kit in chat, it's going to say that there's no kits currently available to me because I'm just a regular player. I'm nobody. I'm not important. But if we go over to our console and we type in chat user add my name, which is Spectre, and then what group we want to be added to. And in this case, it's going to be VIP. It's going to give me access to those kits. So Spectre was added to the group called VIP. Let's go back to gameplay and type slash kit again. And lo and behold, guess what appears for us? The two VIP kits that we just created. Now, bear in mind, once you have a Tebex store set up, all of that stuff that you just saw me do in console is all done for you automatically. So as soon as somebody buys a package from your Tebex store, it automatically puts that player into whatever group you define. That part gets a little bit complicated, but I have covered it in the tutorial that I mentioned earlier. So of course, as you can see, I have nothing in my inventory except for a rock and a torch, and I'll just throw those away real quick. I'll go to my kit GUI and let's claim my ninja suit because I can. And there we go. Like I said before, it actually places it on the player character because I had it on the wear bar. And if we go back in there again and I claim the second one, it's going to put all of those clothing items on my character. Plus, it's going to put all of the other inventory items that we had previously defined in the kit. So there we go. That's exactly how you set up VIP kits using the Rust Kits plugin. And because I forgot to show you this as I was actually recording the video, I had to go back in and show you what it looks like. The title change that I made to my VIP group when it's in chat. So I'm just going to put test in chat. And there you go. That's the change that I made to the better chat data file that I'm sure you guys remember me doing a couple minutes ago. In most cases, it's relatively important that you make your VIPs actually stand out in the crowd amongst other players. A lot of times that's actually what they want to pay for is just the ability to stand out amongst the crowd. Trust me. That basically sums up this week's video. Remember, I put out a brand new video every Friday at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So make sure you click on that red subscribe button down below and turn on notification bell so that you get notified as soon as I upload a new video. And I'm hoping that I earned your like today. And if I didn't, make sure to leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, if you have any questions whatsoever about setting up VIP kits, put them in the comment section down below as well. If you think you might want more hands on or personalized assistance with Rust kits, make sure you join the Discord at discord.srtbull.com. And of course, if you want to take your support for the channel even one step further than I've already asked you to do, you can go to patreon.srtbull.com. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching today's video. I'll see you guys all next Friday.